Welcome to my short talk on Handel and the situation that led to the composition of the Messiah. Handel was born in 1685, which is an incredibly important year to those who enjoy and study classical music, for it was in this year that not only Handel was born, but also Johann Sebastian Bach and the composer Scarlatti, all three of whom are responsible for huge changes in the direction and shape of music and had an impact on music for centuries to follow. Handel was born in Halle in Germany. He was the son of Georg Handel, who was a respected surgeon. And as you'll often find uh, in the lives of these great composers, as he grew up, he showed a great deal of flair and promise for music. In fact, there's evidence that between the ages of around six and nine, he was already able to uh, astonish people with his ability on the keyboard. His father, however, saw no reason for his son to study music. In fact, actively discouraged it. He wanted instead for his son to follow a career in the law. And it is in fact uh, that career that Handel embarked upon uh, until his father's death when Handel was a teenager. At which point Handel was free to pursue his studies in music and did so with a great deal of gusto and enthusiasm. By the age of 18 Handel had composed his first opera which was premiered in Hamburg in 1705. And over the next five years, Handel found work as a composer, conductor and musician in courts and churches across Rome, Naples, Florence and Venice, and in Germany, where George of Hanover was briefly his patron, the future king of England. All this showed Handel was fiercely independent and uh, clearly didn't enjoy bowing and scraping to rich nobles. And it was this almost restless approach to his uh, business that contrasted him directly with Johann Sebastian Bach, who never really moved out of the influence of his patrons. Handel, on the other hand, found himself in 1710 in London, the great central city of the world at the time, bustling and booming with an explosion in the merchant class. This new mercantile and professional class broke the monopoly that had previously been held over music by rich noblemen and patrons. Adding spice to this were the rivalries created in London between two opposing musical camps. The first, those who preferred the works of the great Italian composer Bononcini and brought him to London. On the other side, enthusiasts of Handel's new Italian operas preferred his style. This rivalry was captured in a poem in 1725 by the poet John Byram. Some say, compared to Bononcini, that mine here handles but a ninny. Others aver that he to handle is scarcely fit to hold a candle. Handel remained in London for the rest of his life, producing the most elaborate and intricate operatic and oratorio productions the world had yet seen. As the productions became more elaborate, they became more expensive, as Handel was required to bring in Italian-trained singers and performers who were generally seen as a, of a higher quality and a better class of training than so-called local produce. Messiah was composed in the late summer of 1741, some 30 years after Handel had first arrived in London. The libretto was prepared by Charles Jennings, a prominent librettist, in the hope that Handel would produce the music in time for a performance in Easter the following year. Jenin said, I hope Handel will lay out his whole genius and skill upon it, that the composition may excel all his former compositions as the subject excels every other subject. Handel was clearly inspired by the text and wrote morning till night over the course of three to four weeks in August and September of 1741, producing an astonishing amount of music in a short space of time. Messiah premiered in Dublin in April of 1742 to great critical and financial success. Handel's choice of Dublin for his debut of Messiah was an interesting one, but not surprising, particularly when you consider London audiences' apathetic reaction to the previous season's offerings. Additionally, Handel was a little concerned that the rather loose plotline of Messiah would contrast to his previous successful works which had clearly defined plots and characters. Additionally, Dublin was a city eager to prove that it had the sophistication and clout to stage a major cultural work alongside great cities of the world such as London and Paris. So it made sense for Handel to make the journey over to Ireland to premiere this work and then return triumphantly 
to premiere it in London. Messiah's success in Dublin was indeed replicated in London. The King of England himself was said to be so moved by the Hallelujah Chorus that on hearing it he rose to his feet, thus establishing a tradition that extends to this day. Handel put on annual benefit concerts for his favourite charity, the London Foundling Hospital, and always included Messiah in these performances. He indeed produced a special anthem called the Foundling Hospital Anthem, which has a number of choruses and arias, all dedicated to the idea that those who have money should give to help those who do not. And the final chorus in this wonderful Foundling Hospital Anthem is, of course, the Hallelujah Chorus. In 1759, blind and in failing health, Handel insisted on attending a performance of Messiah that was being held at the Theatre Royal in Covent Garden in London. Eight days later, he died. That gives you some indication as to the importance of Messiah to Handel, and that's reflected in the number of times the work has been performed ever since. Tens of thousands of performances, performed by millions of musicians, with a huge amount of money raised for charity, something which Handel would almost certainly have approved of. And now we find ourselves in this unique situation in 2020, where we're being brought together as a choir of people from all around the world, in isolation but united by their love of this great music. I'm so proud to lead this project, and I'm so grateful to all of you for taking part in it. I can't wait for May the 31st, for us all to stand together and sing this incredible work. And of course, I'm certain Handel would approve of the charitable works that we're doing, but most importantly, of the reverence and respect with which we're giving his music and the subject matter. Thanks so much for watching.